So when you're ready to start inking your bird, <clears throat> what I would recommend doing is first pull up your photo that you printed off and I made mine black and white already. And then go ahead and just enlarge it as much as you can so you can see it as big as possible on your screen. So now you can capture all those little details. In addition to that, I would pull up um, pen and ink bird drawings or whatever animal you're doing so that you can see other artists approaches. Now we're not copying them because we have done our, we selected our own animal, but like in this, it's really great. I can see that, I'm just trying to enlarge it for you here. I can see that they have done a combination of stippling right up here in the beak and the shorter hairs and then they do that um, short kind of choppy hatching with the direction of each feather. So the length of your stroke and the direction of your line is going to be really important to mimicking fur if that's what you're doing. It looks to me like they did a little bit of stippling down here. So that is an awesome approach. Maybe I'm going to I'm going to borrow that idea, copy it, and then paste it um, onto my dock so that I have another example to work from as I go. Um, I'm not going to maybe do that. I'm going to do that. <laughs> and let me shrink this down. And maybe I'll look at a couple other artists to see what they've done. Um, nope, I don't like that one as much. We, For this project, you guys, we are going for a very, very detailed approach. So um, I don't want to see something like this where it's not detailed. I want to see tons and tons of detail. That is not detailed enough either. Um, we're only doing one, so make it fantastic. Um, that one's pretty good. Uh, I still like the first one. So I'm finished drawing my bird and I've tried to get in as many details as possible with my pencil. You probably can't see it, but I even um, lightly did a few like little strokes of hair to see um, the direction and stuff like that. Now if you want to go in with pencil and do this whole thing in pencil before you apply ink, you, you may. Um, I'm feeling brave. I feel like I've done this before, so I'm feeling comfortable um, to get started. So in terms of pen options, I would not recommend using this guy because that will bleed when you add water to it. So instead, I would either che choose your the super, super fine Sharpie or um, the it's called an ultra fine point Sharpie. Um, this one's going to be smaller than this one. Um, if you want to use that, just come and let me know. You'll you can see that um, you're able to get really, really tiny marks with this ultra fine tip Sharpie. I don't have a ton of them, so um, that's why I don't I'm not just going to give them out to everybody and leave them on the cart. Um, this one you can still get fine points, but it's just a little a little bit bigger. Um, if I see anybody using a regular Sharpie, they will be in trouble. The regular size Sharpie, you guys, is this guy right here. And that will be hideous because your lines will be enormous and your dots will be huge. And oh my gosh, it'll take away all the fine detail that we're trying to um, establish with this. Another thing you'll need to think about is what type of inking you want to do. Do you want to do regular hatching, cross hatching? Do you want to have it have contour hatching that wraps around the figure? Do you want to do that scribbling technique or stippling? Um, you guys should have done really detailed animal drawings where you were able to resolve some of these issues. Um, many artists decide to do a combination of different techniques. So I'm actually going to be doing a combination of um, contour hatching that wraps with the direction of the fur and then a little bit of stippling in those very detailed areas that need it. Um, a lot of people get very, very lost with where to start. So what they do is they outline their entire drawing. Do not do that. I cannot stress enough. You do not want any outlines. Notice that even in this beak where it does look like it has an outline, I did like very tiny wispy little pen strokes. Um, they are not outlines. And in the dark black areas, I didn't just go in and fill it all in like shaded in. Instead, I did my little curved contour lines. 
Um, I would recommend starting in your darker areas. Um, it's just, you know, you can always add more, but you can never erase. The lighter areas are going to be your hardest areas. Now, um, inking does turn out so beautiful, but it is hard, you guys. You have to focus and really be precautious as you're going. So I would recommend actually taking your printout and kind of practicing technique on top of it so that you're um, mimicking what you want to do on your watercolor paper. Um, or you can take a piece of scratch paper or you can practice down here, but practice everything that you do before you do it to see if you like it. Um, then you'll notice that um, as I lay down my inking strokes, I do everything just really, really lightly, very delicately, and then um, I always underdo it. So I do way less than I think I need, and then I'll go back in and add a second layer um, because you can never, never, never get rid of what you've done. Um, so like right here, obviously I'm not focusing as much because I'm talking on a video. Um, I think I kind of messed up, but um, I'm gonna just go in and I'm gonna be really delicate and I hardly put any pressure on this pen. This pen will smash and get completely ruined if you put a lot of pressure on, but you really don't need any pressure at all to get a nice fine line, which is what you want. You want really delicate fine lines, no thick chunky lines. <laughs>